So Robbie, great to sit down after six games in charge as manager of Macclesfield FC. How are you finding the role so far? Yeah, I'm enjoying it. I'm loving um, being on the grass with the lads, trying to implement um, my philosophy um, with John and Bandy and, and, uh, and my management team. Um, you know, I'm sitting here, Ben, um, after two games in three days, 14 points from a possible 18 undefeated, a little bit disappointed. Um, you know, we've got real high standards. Um, the, the group have done amazingly well. Um, some of the performances um, have been very, very good. Um, halves have been exceptional. Prescott Cable's first half, Ilkeston first half. Um, we just need to sustain that over 90 minutes. Um, but the group, their their physical stats, you know, Nick has strength and conditioning coach has done brilliant with them pre-season. Um, the recovery has been great. I think we're up about 12k as a team more than last year. Um, I think we've averaged about 108, 109k a game, which is exceptional. Um, and we have a lot of the ball, so it's it's been really, really pleasing. But 14 from 18 undefeated, I think we should be sitting here with 18 from 18. Um, we've had some real tough games, a lot of the teams in the top half, who I think will finish in the top half, some very good teams, really impressed with Hyde yesterday. Going to workshop in that first game was a was a brilliant, brilliant win. Um, going to Whitby um, to win the game, I just think we've got to be more clinical in the final third. Um, we can't keep creating the opportunities. Um, like we did yesterday, when I say opportunities, we, we really never tested their, their goalkeeper. What we did, we got around the sides in between um, and the final third entries with the end product not there. That was the most disappointing thing that we really never tested the goalkeeper. Um, so again, if we start taking our chances, all the decision making, the final third, listen in training, you can put all the drills on, you can put all the patterns of play. But when the lights go on and there's a crowd in the stadium, it's the, that's where it counts. And we need our players to deliver in that final third because it just seems at the minute that teams will get two or three chances against us and score one. But we need 10, 15, 20 chances to score one um, because we're missing so many. The philosophy of the club has often been to run with the 4 2 3 1 formation. Um, obviously, at times this season already, we've sought to adapt to that. Um, how much versatility do you see within the squad and the fact that we are capable of changing these formations? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, predominantly, we do like the 4 2 3 1. The recruitment process over the last three years was for that system. You know, we play wingers or fullbacks. Um, we like to play with two sixes, one to. Um, dictate play um, and as you've seen that's probably John Rooney uh, and one to you know be there as a shield for the back four and then a 10 you know where that's been John Rooney, Alex Curran, Luke Duff Duffy can play in there um, and we like to play with you know two creative wide players and that leaves one set of forward um, and when you're looking in game and you're looking at way, the way games are going listen we went to a back three at workshop we went to a back three against Geisley. Um, yesterday I wanted to go two up but the way the game panned out you know Brandon Lee's first game back was was brilliant you know Kenji was a natural replacement because um, Brandon could only do 60-65 minutes um, so that didn't allow us to put Kenji one up um, and then you look around Elliot come on for, for Dawes um, that was a natural change Sam come on at the back because I thought Dawes in that first half with the energy he showed breaking the lines was fantastic and again it's the big debate is Dawes a midfield player um, Dawes has been an exceptional centre half um, um, as I've said numerous times there is an option to play Dawes in the park but again because of his energy levels um, you know he got cramp again which we had to bring him off so that left us with um, you know Courtney Doofus and Tom Tom was already on the pitch so then, as a management team, we're thinking, right, how do we go two up? If we'd have gone two up, that would have meant playing probably John Rooney on the right wing in a four, or, you know, Trey on the right wing with Elliot Whitehouse, who's played in so many positions, going to a right back, where that really didn't, wouldn't have suited Elliot. You know, Redshaw was causing us problems down that side. Um, so, really, I wanted to get caught on the pitch and go two up, but the formation didn't really allow us. And if I'd have gone 3-2-3-2, three, two, three, two, 
the reason why I changed from that at Whitby is because we looked a little bit open. So you have to think, we had a point, you know, were we happy with the point? No. Was a point deserved for both teams? Probably yes. So again, it was a balance of do we go and try and win the game outright or maybe just be a bit um, defensively minded and not go too up. So again, you, this is why you love football because you have to make decisions. So again, the big thing, so if we go back five, the recruitment process with Duffs and JJ, they're, they're wide of a three and they're not wing backs. So if you go to a five, the wing backs, could they be Duffs and JJ? I'm not so sure they could. You'd probably go with you know, a Kenji, a Brandon and a Trey. So then where do you get JJ and Duffs into the side? Um, then you've got JJ, Duffs, Rooney, Curran, um, all fighting for that midfield berth, you know, because we need one defensive minded player, which is Ellie or Danny. Those two can play together as well. If you go two up, who gets left out in terms of you have to go to a five three two or a or a four four two in that. But again, I think they're the problems you're thinking about every single game, every single day. What do you do? How do you get the best out of the players we have? So somebody's going to have to miss out. And listen, it's fantastic the fact we've got loads of fantastic players. And that's a, a, a huge headache. But at times, certain games will will be different. And I think already we've seen how many different formations we can implement into the side. But at times, you want to play two up. But to play two up in our team, you have to go 4-4-2, four, four, as I've said, or a 5-3-2. If you go 5-3-2, you know, JJ and Duffs, you know, are not wing backs. And they're two of our most creative players. So again, it's problems we have to solve, but again, we create we've probably created the most chances in the league. Um, and we've you know we're not scoring as many goals as we like, but we're trying to find a way how if we if we take the if we take two tenths of our chances, you know, we'd be it's, it's the amount of chances we create not taken. That's the disappointing thing. I suppose, as you've mentioned, the blessing we've got is we've got so many exceptional attacking options that we, we've got at our disposal. Um, from your point of view, then, how difficult is it to to pick those attacking options on a day to day basis? Yeah, it's 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 you know we, myself, Bandy, John, and Nick, you know all the management team, you know have daily calls um, going through our thoughts um, but you have to have a balance you have to have the right balance of the team you know a lot of emphasis now is you know playing this this attractive free-flowing exciting football but you have to get the balance right at the back um, which we've done on a whole I think we've defended really really well um, Dawson, Mendy, um, Trey, Kenji, Brandon Lee, Scott who's gone out alone to win the show Lewis Fensum, so we've got so many defensive options and we've defended well, so the balance has to be right and we've got it right so far. But as I said in the dressing room after the game, that when our defenders are winning headers and they're winning second balls and they're defending well, to concede one from three or four attacks, and when we're creating numerous opportunities and you only take one, sometimes you know we need our creative players to, to go and get two and three goals so we can react and relax. A little bit, um, and I'm sure on Thursday we'll be working once again on the final third. But the most frustrating thing is that the patterns we do to get in those situations, and we do it all week in training, we're getting in the right areas, but then you, it's an individual decision um, to make that right decision. You know, when you get in there, can you look, can you pull it back to somebody's running in from the um, 10 position? Can you just right way to pass? You know, they're the big decisions you have to make on the pitch, but all we can do as a coaching team is um, coach the our players to get in those positions by the patterns, and when they do, it's on the day, as I've said, when the lights are on, when there's three and a half thousand in the stadium, it's down to the individual, and you know, you can, you can then try and coach them on, this is how you play the pass, this is, you know, where you've got to look, and this is where you've got to scan, and, but it's the moments, they're the crucial moments, um, and the hardest thing to do is put the ball in the back of the net. We're creating the opportunities, 
without really testing the goalkeeper yesterday. But if you look at the Prescott first half, if you look at Elkerston first half, the game should be done. The game should be done. We should be, should be sitting here with 18 points from 18, and it's 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 disappointing that we're not. Obviously, this summer we've brought in a number of new additions um, in various different positions across the park. Um, as you've mentioned previous, with the, the changes in shape that we do tend to do, does that change your transfer policy at all? Well, I think looking at it now, Ben, looking at the dynamic of the squad, it was it was built for the four two three one or four three three. But the reason why I added a couple of defensively minded players because we didn't know how long Sam and Brandon Lee would be, um, and that changed the, the policy a little bit. Um, um, they're now fit, so we're probably, you know, a bit. We've probably carried one or two defensively minded players too many. That's why Scott needed games. You know, a few other, you know, players might need games going out alone. But Scott, you know, he's he's done terrific. He's done terrific when he come in, and he'll be a huge asset to the football club. But I think when you look at the dynamic, I think we're probably an impact player short, um, especially when you know Keelan's injury. Um, I'm not sure how long he's going to be back. He's nearly there, but again, hasn't had. Didn't do all the pre-season, you know, missed games. So I think we're probably one impact player short. Um, we've got a couple of trialists in. Because um, when you look at the bench and, and Duffs and JJ and the wide players have worked tremendously hard and you look and think who can impact the game like those two, you know, we haven't really got that dynamic player to come on. You know, people say you miss a James Berry, you miss a Kane Drummond. Of course you do. These players, you know, who... You can score goals, and and the reason why they they're now playing in the football league is because their decision making in the final third was very good. And if our players can get to that level, you know they won't be at Mac. And I think if we're all being, you know, realistic, that if you consistently make the right decisions when you get in the final third as a forward-thinking player, you wouldn't be playing for Mac. You'd be playing in the football league like James and KNR. So. It's that consistency. JJ and Duff have done brilliant. Trey can play at one. Kenji can play at one. And I said to him after the game that, you know, that if we can get that consistency level with the right pass in the final third, we should have had 18 points from 18. We're undefeated after six. There's so much positivity um, around the football club. Yes, we've played teams that we believe will finish in the top half already. Um, but again, we have to. The next two games in the league, Stockton, who has had a great start, Ashton, level on points, who has had a great start. So after the first eight games of the season, you look at the way the table starts to shape up. We've probably played all the top teams. So again, you know we've had a hard start, but it's been a hard start when they've played us. Let's not forget that. Um, but we're loving it, we're enjoying it. The lads have bought into it. They're doing exceptionally well. Um, they're working as hard as they possibly can. There's a good unity, a good team spirit. Um, but obviously with my high standards is we're sitting here and being <laughs> that disappointed. One thing that we briefly touched on in your post-match interview on Monday um, was our FA Cup and FA Trophy journeys. Um, obviously we start our FA Cup journey on Saturday away at Tadcaster. Um, I suppose the, the big thing for you is FA Cup first round this year, isn't it? Yeah, massive for the football club. Um, We've got so close on a few occasions, uh, and we've had, you know, the FA Trophy run last year to get to a semi-final was brilliant from all concerned, um, and we were so unlucky. Um, you know, if it had been a two-legged encounter, um, like in previous seasons, that away goal which Kane got at Gateshead would have been invaluable bringing Gateshead back here. Um, we were so close, but we knew it was um, one game. It, the conditions weren't great. Um, and listen, we had a right goal, we were so unfortunate, um, so we can be proud of that. Um, the FA Cup steeped in history, we know what it's about, and obviously the aim and the objectives are, like we've, I've said to every other manager that was here, it's first round proper. Um, we, you know, it's a tough start at Tadcaster. Um, people will look at the result we played in the FA Trophy, um, it was a night game, 7-0, um, but they'll be up for it. The FA Cup, we all know what it can produce. We all know there's upsets and shocks. I think it's the perfect game for them. Big following, Macclesfield Football Club, probably the best draw at this stage anybody could have. Um, so they'll be right up for it and we're going to play a strong team. 
we'll, we'll you know we'll get minutes for players, but the whole squad will be going. We're not taking anybody lightly because it's imperative that this football club has a good FA Cup run. We know it's televised. You know when you get to the you know the first round, um, and we want to be one of those teams in the hat for the first round with an opportunity to. You know, to, to get prize money for going that way, TV revenue, the income from tickets. Um, so again, make no mistake about it, Ben, the, the cup runs are valuable to this football club, like every other non-league football club. Um, so we're going to give it our best shot on both, on, on both occasions. One thing that we've briefly touched on previously is um, obviously the transfer recruitment. Um, is there any room for us to, to look to strengthen the squad? There's always room to strengthen this, this, this squad. Um, you know the amount of sponsorship that Bob Trafford's brought in, the amount of you know people who have bought into this project, this football club. You know the investment we've had from um, John, Amar, Dan, Rob um, is is brilliant, and with their their passion and their knowledge, with the sponsorship that Bob's brought in, with the fan base, you know that allows us to put a competitive team on the pilot and make no mistake about it. We are. One of the, we have one of the, or if not the biggest buzz in the league. Um, we can do that because of where we are as a football club. Um, and if good players become available, there is a, there is an opportunity to get those players. Obviously, we'll have to think about players going out loan to get games. Um, but are we now looking at players who maybe have got a point to prove, who, who are young, dynamic, hungry, uh, maybe have got released? Um, with a profile um, of being at football league clubs um, because the players we've got in have done brilliant for us Listen, every single player that's in this group at the minute deserves to be in it um, they all deserve what they earn there's no doubt about that um, you know and I'd never I'd never throw that at any of our, our players because they deserve every penny they get you know the pressure that's on this football club to produce every single game They've got a great togetherness. Um, they work exceptionally hard, um, and people will say, um, "People will say, well, you should go because you got the biggest budget because you got the best facilities." But football doesn't work like that. Marine deserved to go up last year in the player final. Um, you know, our budget was bigger than theirs, um, but we're honest, we're transparent. Um, but there is room. There all, there's always room to bring in good players. There's always room to try and get better but the players coming in have to be have to be on the level if not better than the players we have um, as I say there's one or two youngsters in now on trial who who have done well um, and there might be room for for one or two um, younger players um, to come in and earn earn a contract you know so it might be an option now that a, a couple of youngsters come in on a, on a non-contract as a pay as you play with an opportunity to earn a contract with this football club um, and we're going to be able to look at those players so again we're in a good place um, I can't speak highly enough of the group what they've done every game Ben as you know is a is a cup final and you just need that sometimes when you get in that final third just players to relax just you know just relax and calm down and um, saying that you know my heart rate up was <laughs> off the scale yesterday watching as I bought a new a new watch and it was all morning it was fine and it's <laughs> the heart rate has gone up massively within the game so um, um, that's what that's what being at this football club does it brings pressure it brings anxiety it brings stress but you just got to learn how to how to deal with it um, and you deal with it by winning games of football and you deal with it by watching us play and players making the right decisions and if they can get into a position where they're making the right decisions more times than not I've got no doubts we will go up um, I think we've had a great start the start could be better I believe we should be on 18 from 18 but if we're sitting here if somebody would offer me in the first six games of the teams we've played 14 points from 18 the target was 16 um, and we nearly got that but um, I'm really pleased with the group really pleased with how it's come together and I'm really enjoying it